in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. This is the FIFA Basketball World Cup Asian qualifiers and the battle between Saudi Arabia and the Philippines. Well, this is Group E, and these are the games on game day 10 in Group E, Jordan, New Zealand, and also Lebanon, India. Our attention right now is on Saudi Arabia chasing a spot in the FIBA Basketball World Cup. You can see right now they're in fifth place, but their win over India the other day has uh, given them a chance, uh, kept them in the hunt because Jordan also lost. So Saudi Arabia pulled it within uh, one win of Jordan. You see Philippines are third, but obviously uh, they have a spot assured in the World Cup as the hosts. Saudi Arabia, the reason why they are in need of uh, a couple more wins, well, definitely one more win. If somehow, some way, they can finish level with Jordan in terms of wins and losses, they would go through because they have the advantage in the goal differential tiebreaker. Uh, they split their games, uh, but when you add the points uh, scored and against, uh, this Saudi Arabia team uh, would edge Jordan in that category. Of course, a lot of basketball has to be played before then, and, and really, whenever the Philippines take the court, they are the story. Such a rabid fan following back home, and really uh, have fans all over the world. Uh, whenever the Philippines play an international competition, you can always be assured uh, that they're going to have a lot of fans uh, coming into the arena in the upper tier here in Jeddah. You can hear the oohs and ahs. Uh, from their fans, and uh, they will be the main attraction. Well, they will certainly be one of the main attractions, but for Filipinos, they will be the main attraction uh, when the World Cup is staged uh, next year. And really, uh, for Chot Rays, who led the Philippines at the World Cup in 2014, uh, expectations are high, but with high expectations comes pressure. Philippines have not been playing as well as a lot of the fans want. Chot Reyes feels the pressure, he hears the criticism, and uh, the main thing is to be ready to go once the World Cup starts. So if you're tinkering with your lineups and you're shuffling players in and out and finding the best fits, uh, you have to give them time. And uh, he certainly thinks that they're moving in the right direction. For Saudi Arabia, here they are uh, having played uh, some inspirational basketball, uh, especially in the fourth quarter of their game against India. Now that was a game that they were expected to win, they had to win, and ultimately they did win, and they won it convincingly uh, here on this court in Jeddah. They won it 85 to 54, and uh, this is their second second game against the Philippines in the World Cup qualifiers after losing by 38 points uh, in the last window. Of course, that was the only time in which they had scored fewer than 60 points in a qualifiers game. That was a very, very difficult game for them. Saudi Arabia won, again, their most recent game in the World Cup qualifiers by 31 uh, over India. And, uh, well, three of Saudi Arabia's four wins in the competition have happened at home. So this is where they want to get it done. They got the home court advantage, and they're looking forward to it. But for now, we're going to have a pause for the national anthems.
Well, you can feel the buzz in the crowd here in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, getting ready to take on Philippines. And the two coaches uh, shake hands. The players meet as well at midcourt uh, before they trade blows in uh, what I fully expect to be an entertaining encounter. It's always uh, a lot of fun. I think watching the Philippines and the Saudis as well, they like to get up, get to the court, play above the rim. There's Ahmed Al. Ali Yassin Al Shuwaili, James Alexander Boyer, and Alexei Stepanenko from Iraq, Australia, and Kazakhstan, respectively, uh, refereeing this game. And again, it is a very important game uh, when you look at Saudi Arabia's situation, trying to stay in the hunt. They conceivably they have a they have a good chance if they win all four of their games a great chance if they can beat the Philippines uh, or win their next one against New Zealand that would be great Scotty Thompson Kai Soto Roger Bogoy Dwight Ramos and Japheth Aguilar in the starting five today for the Philippines and some good players coming off the bench as well of course Japheth Aguilar played for Chop Rays in 2014 when they played at uh, the World Cup in Spain and Cast your uh, your mind back to that time. That was a really good effort by the Philippines. Uh, they did get one win. Uh, Mohammed Al Mawani, Mafna Al Mawani, Fahad Bilal, Khalid Abdel Gabar, and Hazim Bader Al Yohar, who had a sensational uh, first game the other day in the Asian qualifiers for Johan Royakers, the head coach of Saudi Arabia, who is from the Netherlands. There he is. Al Yahar was uh, playing with a lot of emotion, and you can see how much it meant to him uh, to not only play for Saudi Arabia, but to have a good game and also uh, to come out and help his team win and stay in the hunt. He was celebrating like there was no tomorrow. And in fact, after that performance, uh, on average, he's the leading scorer now at 16 points per game. Also, uh, seven rebounds per game. It was uh, a debut to remember forever for him. Uh, I dare say today will be a little bit more of a test for him coming up against a Philippines team that's going to have a lot more quickness, a lot more savvy, a lot more nous. Uh, Saudi Arabia are at home. But I think Philippines are, are clearly the favorites, especially when you, when you cast your eyes back uh, to that last meeting between these teams. It was it was one way traffic Philippines winning that one on August 29th 84 to 46 and of course that was a, a different Philippines team in so much that they had Jordan Clarkson the uh, the NBA star but uh, for Saudi Arabia it's the same team so maybe that continuity is, is going to help them also there was uh, well, Bobby Reed Parks was in that team as was Scotty Thompson. Ramos also played as did Japheth Aguilar and uh, Jamie Malonzo. So Chop Rays does have uh, a lot of familiarity with all of these players. He sees them in competition all the time in the Philippines and uh, with you know the, the time coming ever so close, you know, less than a year away uh, for the World Cup. Uh, he's excited to see uh, what this team can do and the selection of the Philippines team I think is going to be very very difficult you would, you would think that uh, some players like Soto and Clarkson are going to write their names in the team uh, you can already you can already write them down in Ramos as well and uh, you know who else is going to make up uh, who, who's going to take up those other nine spots I'm sure that's a, something that is discussed frequently in Manila and everywhere else in the Philippines but right now it's all about taking on Saudi Arabia Well, hello, everybody. Good evening from Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. It's uh, Saudi Arabia taking on the Philippines in the Asian qualifiers, game day 10 for the FIBA Basketball World Cup. And Saudi Arabia coming out and almost getting the turnover. In the end, they turn it right back over, and Kai Soto gets the first two points of the game with a rim rocker. Well, that would have been a dream start to get a turnover in the basket. Well, Al Johar 
puts up his first attempt. He's not shy about it. Goes off the back of the iron. Now Ramos gets it to Soto. Aguilar, oh, nice soft jumper. Great play, great early start here, third Philippines. Although they did almost turn it over early. Almarwani gets it down low, and the big fella goes up and in. Uh, they would love to get him involved early on and not just getting points at the free throw line, which is where he does a lot of his damage. Ramos drives in off the glass, not there. Now Mathna Almarwani pushes it quickly. And he gets in and he scores. Knots it at four. Oh, beautiful bounce pass. And the basket and M1 coming. Scotty Thompson. Three different players getting their knee, their names on the score shirt, street perk on the score sheet here early for the Philippines. That was the opportunity where they thought they had a turnover and they were trying to push it up the floor to get an easy basket, but in fact it led to an easy Soto basket. Oh, you gotta love that blazer that Chop Rays is wearing. It looks stylish. Seven to four. Gilas on top. Mafna. Almawani and a big man Almawani with the rebound. So the foul called before the rebound. And the foul was called on Kai Soto. Bilal pulls up mid-range. Oh, sweet jumper from Ramos. Right at the elbow. Here's Matna. And Roykers, you might wonder if he's thinking about getting a timeout, but his team's settling for some jump shots here early. The Philippines, Japan, and Australia are the three teams that we know from Asia that will be at the FIBA Basketball World Cup, as well as New Zealand. Here is the pass, as well as Lebanon. And Abdel Gabar missing. Quickly to the other end, and another turnover. So again, we know that Lebanon, New Zealand, Philippines, Australia, and Japan will be at the World Cup already for Asia. Who else is gonna join them? Oh boy, the interception. And that is going to really be disastrous for Saudi Arabia. Oh, it does not. They might get away with it. The turnover, they do indeed. Mahna Almarwani now on the open floor. They got a chance to score. He pushes it quickly. He goes up and draws the foul from Japheth Aguilar. Well, what a break. I mean, give him credit for hustling down and playing defense and getting the rebound. But Philippines should have scored. Five years of age, Japheth Aguilar, 2.08 meters in height, 6 feet 10 inches. And it looked like Mathna pulled back on that free throw a little bit. He wasn't too confident that it was going to go in. And in the end, he got up on the rim and it went off the backboard and in. You know, it's cutting down on turnovers, making free throws, not making mistakes. That's what Saudi Arabia needs to do today uh, to beat the Philippines, who are number 
you know, have a, a feeble world ranking of number 41. Saudi Arabia, meanwhile, uh, are all the way down at number 73. Uh, but when you get wins, and especially you get wins against quality opposition, you beat teams that are higher ranked than you, that is uh, potentially going to help your ranking. Here's Soto from a long way out. Mata Almarwani rebounds and runs, and he only knows, whoa, oh, that's the goal, goal interference, surely. Looked like maybe he got it before it went off the backboard. I thought it didn't hit the backboard. And the three-point shot, and no, stepped out of bounds. Could have sworn that the layup attempt at the other end had hit the backboard first, but here is, look at this. Oh, terrific block. I'll tell you what, he was so quick, Kai Soto, he fooled me. Great no call by the referees. Abdel Gabar drives in. Oh boy, that was slick. He was really their best player against India the other day. And to put that into per perspective, I mean, uh, Saudi Arabia at this stage of India's development should beat them every game out there. So, uh, but when you need wins, it doesn't it doesn't matter who they come against. Uh, so they were very happy to get that win against the Indians. Now, Mata Amawani. Gets rid of it to Bilal, looks good. No, nope. off the front of the rim. The game being played at a frenetic pace here in Jeddah. Ramos pulls up wide open. Nobody boxes out Aguilar, who then not able to control the rebound. Saudi Arabia just standing there looking up rather than putting the bodies on the Filipino rebounders. Aguilar could have just gone straight back up after that. This was Abdel Gabar driving in and banking it in. Oh, what a great start to the game, an electric start. Abdel Gabar splits the defense. We're able to get it back. Mohammed has it. Just checked in, spins. Oh, tough shot from Mohammed. He gets it to go. And Saudi Arabia have taken the lead. Osama al Bargawi also in the game now for Saudi Arabia. And great putback by Kai Soto. Puts Philippines back in front. Abdel Gabar. Oh, nice pass. And couldn't finish. And now Philippines run the counter. Beam me up, Scotty Thompson. Nope, he's gonna have to stay down. And Saudi Arabia, again, good passing from Saudi Arabia. And an one coming for Abdel Gabar. And you really feel like that win against India has just filled the Saudi Arabia team with some hope that maybe, just maybe, they can catch Jordan and get to the FIBA Basketball World Cup. And I'm sure that if Jordan fans are watching this, there's a little bit of unease. Also considering that, you know, Jordan do not have the easiest schedule to close things out. But Jordan themselves were beaten pretty soundly in their game the other day by this Filipino team, 74-66. The Saudi Arabia back up by a couple of points. Long way to go, though. Oh, driving in, the handoff, and uh, the foul. So wholesale substitutions with uh, Jamie Malonzo in the game, number 13. He'll be going to the free throw line. Anj Kwame, number 34, in the game as well as uh, Perez, number 17. That was the... Tamer Mohammed shot. Uh, James Malonzo misses the first. So he gets one of two. Look at the Filipino fans. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter where this team plays. They are going to have fans in the seats. Abdel Gabar. 
Now Mohammed. Abdul Gabar dribbling up high. Five on the shot clock. Mathna Almarwani. Very tough shot. And the ball goes out of bounds. Off of. Looked like it went off of. Well, somebody from Saudi Arabia. Good rebound, here they come the other way. Yohar gets the board, he's got the basketball. Almarwani, count it! There's one thing about Matna Almarwani, he is not shy about putting the basketball up. It doesn't matter if he's hot or cold, he will shoot it. And this time he makes it. Dwight Ramos for three. Tried to get it right back. And Bobby Ray Parks, who's checked in, the uh, the gunslinger, the lefty, not able to corral the rebound. Look at this. Just steps into it. Almawani just has a love and a passion for the game. You see it every time he hits the court, he is going full throttle the whole time. And these Saudi Arabia fans loving seeing their team get off to a great start here tonight. It's about 40 minutes. It's not just about this first quarter. Abdul Malik Ashur has checked into the game as well. Number 55, he's got the basketball for Saudi Arabia. Now Mohammed, bounce pass down low to Ashur. That was the right idea, just could not quite get it to him. And that's why I see Roy is applauding his point guard or his, uh, his team. Perez looks at the options. Here's Bobby Ray Parks. You got to get a hand in his face. Step back for three. Count it. You know it's coming from Bobby Ray Parks. That is his patented shot right there. Ashur got deep. Dangerous pass. Now Mohammed dumps it down low. Oh, nice pump fake at first. And then coming in, Kwame comes in and affects the shot from Al Yohar. And then Bobby, oh, look at that, the rejection on Milanzo. And not sure. Saleh. Al Yohar with the rebound, and it'll stay at this end. And Al Yohar, you, you can see that the quickness, the pace of this game, a little bit different to what he was facing against India. But look at Matna Almarwani. Breaks out the gun show. Look at him, number six. Not in my house, he says. And now the Australian referee just telling Matna, just easy big fella. Don't stand over him and, and celebrate too much. Three-pointer from Abdul Gabar. Kwame is an impressive player and driving in, missing. Look at Kwame right there. Goes back up with a putback, not able to get it. And then he is ultimately fouled. Perez went in for the layup. Well, just an absolute fantastic start to the game here in Jeddah. Now you get the feeling that Chop Ray's knows he just needs to ride these stormy seeds here at the very beginning. And some blood on, uh, looks like uh, Al Yohar either caught it in the nose. Yeah, he got it in the nose definitely on his going for a rebound. Here's Aj Kwame, who was just so impressive back at the FIBA Olympic qualifying tournament in Serbia, in Belgrade. Well, that team was coached by Tab Baldwin. And he misses the second one. And now the, the, the uh, ruling is that he got over the line too soon. And look at all these Filipino fans. I mean, they can't get enough of it. They're 
They've got their video. They've got their smartphones out, no doubt. All stocked up with the uh, FIBA Basketball World Cup qualifiers app and courtside 1891, and they're filming. Getting some snapshots of their favorite players. There's Mahna El Marwani. A great leap for the rebound. Muhammad Abdel Gabar for three. Well, they're getting those looks, so they're just going to take them. Uh, but ultimately, you got to put the ball on the deck and do something different. Here goes the three. Right. Calvin Altana thought he had it. He was waiting to celebrate. Oh, it looked like it went off of, yes, it did indeed. It went off of Peta, so it's going to be Saudi Arabia basketball. I mean, this, this is all about energy and effort for Saudi Arabia right now. They have to bring it for 40 minutes. Driving in, and that's how the first quarter finishes. Another look at Abdel Gabar, hoping there was going to be a foul, and then Perez at the other end. So at the end of one quarter, 16 to 16, Saudi Arabia and the Philippines. Well, just one of nine from deep for Saudi Arabia, one of five for Philippines. Uh, both teams uh, also struggling to see Philippines five of 16 inside the arc. You'd expect those numbers to improve. Well, what a great start to the game we have in terms of uh, frenetic activity. Almost, uh, well, there was a turnover, and then uh, Saudi Arabia turned it right back over, and Kai Soto got a dunk. And Japheth Aguilar got on the board early, uh, but then Saudi Arabia kicked it into gear. Mohammed, or Al Marwani, and then Mathna Al Marwani on the break. And staying right with it was Scotty Thompson. And Ramos, one of the stars of this uh, Filipino team. Uh, but look at Mata Marwani. Just it looked to me in live action that was a goal interference, but then on the replay, it looked like uh, Kai Soto got up and, and got a good block. Hey, how about that, folks? Scanning that barcode to get courtside 1891 for video stream schedules and scores. Everything you need at your fingertips and your smartphone. Second quarter underway. And Bilal back in the game. Here's Cotty. Oh, look at him go from the baseline. And I like Moyers bringing him off the bench because he brings that physicality and he brings that athleticism. And we saw it in that first play. Perez to the corner. And the tip, no good, off the miss from Altana. Oh boy, Mata Amawani telegraphed the pass. Perez, oh, Perez got ahead of himself. He lost control of it, and now Saudi Arabia with a chance. Abdel Gabar. Mata Amawani just off the front of the rim. Oh, Bobby Ray Parks spins. And he was fouled. Kind of a late whistle from the Iraqi referee, but I think he was just wanting to see who made the contact. Look at Cotty, his right after coming into the game, he gets the dunk.
So it's Puri Aram, Ange Kawame, Altana, Bobby Ray Parks, and Perez in the game right now for the Philippines. Perez has it and is fouled by Abdel Gabar. Again, Perez played against Jordan the other day. 18 minutes, Perez had 11 points. It's the first time he played in the Asian qualifiers. Interesting player. Might just contend for a spot in that team for the Philippines. And he was driving in, and it was Almawani with the rebound. Muhammad Almawani. Now quickly to Mafna Almawani. Bilal for three. And they need some of those threes to drop. If you're going to take them, you got to make them. And they need to change the chip and try something else. Oh, boy, another turnover. And that one by Perez, and that's going to lead Chuck Rays to bringing him out of the game. 28 years of age, Perez. Well, I'm going to to Abdel Gabar. High off the glass, and the presence of Kwame affecting that shot. And that's where, you know what, you look at the stat sheet, and you're like, well, he didn't get a block for that, but he definitely affected the shot. It's just as good as a block. And then he goes to the other end, and big number 34 jumps up and scores with that jump hook. I mean, for me, he's a must to be in that team. He is just such a physical presence inside. Nodded at 18. Oh boy, a little bit out of control. They get it to Mo Almawadi. And Aram, or no, it's uh, just checked. It's just checked into the game. Yes, it was indeed. It was Aram who was called for the foul. For a minute there, I thought it was Kim Bauer. But he had snuck into the game without me recognizing him. Of Tana goes out. And Ramos comes back into the game. And Amawani makes the first. That's one thing he does very well. Big Mo Almawani, he shoots the free throws well. And he's got his team back in front. Thompson over to Kwame. Boy, what a test that is for Almawani. I don't think he can stop him. But Kwame, great back to the basket game. I mean, would you look at those Filipino fans? This is a, an away game. They have taken over Jetta. You can hear the chance of defense. Defense. This is like a home game for the Philippines. The long shot. Now Bobby Ray parts with the rebound. Bobby Ray lets it fly. Uh, but if anything, I think that extra energy in the house brought by these Filipino fans is really helping Saudi Arabia today. Oh, your heart back in the game. And he has some treatment on, had the nose bleed after getting popped across the bridge of the nose. And Kwame with the great defense, six seconds on the shot clock. I mean, Kwame, I say this with the greatest respect, is a beast. And he is playing with a real sense of purpose today. You can see it, but he, he, might, need, he might need a break. Pulling up Bilal. Goodness me, that was hard off the glass. And the 24 second shot clock expires.
Scotty Thompson brings it in. Oh, the spin from Kawhi, he goes in. Oh, he couldn't get it to go. Great challenge from Al Yohar. Ramos in the lane. He doesn't get it. And then a push called on Gilas. I mean, for me, I love seeing Kai Soto and Ange Kwame, Kwame out there. Here he is, Kwame. But he, Kwame is much more of a traditional big. I mean, he is, you would think that it would be appealing to get that twin tower combination out there at some point. Maybe we'll see it. The reach of your heart. Now they swing it from the wing. Well, Saudi Arabia are just really struggling from deep. They've only made one three-pointer, but they keep putting them up. Great defense. I mean, that's what's saving them right now. Saudi Arabia is their attention to details on defense, but this time Dwight Ramos drives in and scores and puts the Philippines back in front. And again, look at these incredible fans. I have to say, the Gilas supporters the majority majority in the Jetta house today. These guys are like rock stars. These players. So the timeout, Saudi Arabia looking for a, a restart. That was Ramos driving in. Right, Ramos with four points, just two of six from the floor. I mean, this guy is, you know, he's come in in a difficult situation with this team, and you feel the positivity, the positive vibes that he's bringing into the team. He's telling them exactly what they need, need to do. He's keeping it simple. And it looks like the players respond to him. Abdel Gabar. Abdel Gabar bumped. Here's Bilal. Oh, nice handoff. Oh, great block from Soto. And Kai is the guy. Now they're trying to keep the basketball out of his hands. Muhammad gets away about 12 centimeters. It looks. Here he is. Soto has it. No stopping that. Soto, I mean, in the building. Four point lead for the Philippines, their biggest of the game. Al Yohar misses everything just off the glass, but the rebound, they don't reset the shot clock. Abdel Gabar puts it up this time and pulls Saudi Arabia back to within a point. And there are the Saudi Arabia fans. They can make some noise as well. Bobby Ray Parks off one foot. Oh! And led with his elbow. Kind of shoved off. And Roy Cruz here. That's right. Now we got a chance to go back in front. Al Yohar frustrated. He hit so many three pointers in his uh, on his debut. He's Wants to see that basketball go in the hoop, and it's just not going in yet. He was 4-5 from deep against India. Uh, Bobby Ray Parks comes up with the steal. Here he is in the open floor, and that's the best way to answer it. What a play from Bobby Ray Parks. 
And again, if you're Saudi Arabia, you can't turn it over and get, give up easy baskets to the Philippines. They will run away with it. Uh, good defense reaching in, knocking it away. Dwight Ramos takes it right away from Ali Shubaili. Now the pass goes off of Soto's hands and a chance to run. And Abdel Gabar. Oh boy, that would have been the shot of the century if he had made that. Gosh. He was going to put it up and then he heard footsteps. Watch this. Look at this. Are you kidding me? It wasn't that bad of an attempt, to be honest. Again, that is the most beautiful miss you will ever see. So he's going to take a seat. I think probably the coach would have preferred him to go up normally or at least, ooh, almost a push there. Saudi Arabia fans thought so. Oh, nice bounce pass. Oh, the rejection. Another one from Soto. Kim Bao, meanwhile, is checked into the game. He sets the, the pick at midcourt. Scotty Thompson. Skip pass over to Dwight Ramos. Pagoy also in the game. And, oh, boy, just grazed the net. Good hustle. Uh, now it starts it. That was Kim Bao saving in bounds, but it goes to Saudi Arabia. Sure, back in the game. Pulls up and gets it to go. And back to a one point game, just under two minutes remaining in this first half. Ramos. Soto bumped out from behind the arc. And Shibaili. Called for the foul. Look at Soto. No, not in here. Not in here. Get it out of here. Kai Zachary Soto. Oh, beautiful tent. Beautiful spin from Pagoy. Turn around. Folks, look at this. And you're looking at what the World Cup is going to be like. Only multiply that times 100. It's going to be crazy. Timeout on the court. Saudi Arabia trying to keep pace with the Philippines. Philippines lead it 28 to 25 here in the King Abdullah Sport City. Listen, I really like and keep playing in that structure on offense. Got it? Keep playing in that structure on offense. Big guys, make sure that you guys got to start rolling a little bit for us to open up on the outside. I think a lot you re-screen, and then we got to go on sprint slips. Otherwise, you're going to just be pushed outside. Now, got it? Now that you're a shooter, got it? So shoot the ball. How about that? Wasn't that a great timeout? I mean, Roy Akers is is absolutely spot on. He's telling Shibata, hey, listen, I believe in you. You're a shooter. Shoot it. And then just simple things like the bigs. You've got to roll if you're going to open it up outside. But I still don't know. I don't know right now if I want Saudi Arabia taking too many jump shots. But I guess uh, the thinking goes that eventually they are going to fall. Uh, right now, just 2 of 15 from three-point range. Uh, they only trail by three points. Here he is right after hearing his coach say to shoot it, and he applauds. He doesn't care that he missed it. In fact, I think that was uh, Bilal that shot that. And now the turnover. Well, this Philippines team, you know, speaking the truth, you know, 
took a while the first time these two teams met to really blow the game wide open. The same thing could happen today, but you have to be impressed with how Saudi Arabia have hung around so far. Well, Ali Shibali actually has missed that one. And Bilal, it was Bilal who had missed the other one, the previous one. So Chot Rays doesn't want to keep that, doesn't want to lose that timeout. He calls it. It's 28-25, Philippines on top. Very important final minute in this game, especially of the first half, especially when you consider Saudi Arabia. They want to go to halftime uh, with some confidence. Some Saudi Arabia fans trying to get behind their team here the final minute. Philippines would like to get a little bit of momentum going to halftime themselves. That's why Chop Ray has called the timeout. The longer you allow a team like Saudi Arabia to stay in the game, the more they're going to believe in their chances. Pavoy backs up, guarded by Bilal. Turns, puts it up, misses. Great rebound from Muhammad. Now Johan puts up a very tough shot from the line. Well, he is the great hope of Saudi Arabian basketball. He's a youngster. You got to ride him. You got to. Let him get that experience. Dwight Ramos launches from downtown. That's good for Dwight Ramos. And Philippines have their biggest lead of the game now, six points. And it's imperative that Saudi Arabia get this last shot. Abdel Bagar, Abdel Gabar gives it to Bilal. Oh boy. And they do not get the last shot. Well, fortunately for Saudi Arabia, the Philippines did not score. That would have been a disaster. As it is, Chart Reyes in the Philippines. Ample off the court, leading it 31 to 25. Here it is again. Great quickness from Scotty Thompson, and you saw the letting on the backboard light up. So it was too late. At the end of a fast and furious and frenetic first half, it's Philippines leading Saudi Arabia 31 to 25. Well, both teams with two makes from deep. And Philippines with four more inside the arc, albeit with a lot more attempts, five more rebounds for Gilas, twice as many assists, but they've also turned it over. Abdel Gabar and the Al Marwanis doing the damage for Saudi Arabia, Ramos, Soto, and Kwame for Gilas, the Philippines. Well, Saudi Arabia have got the whiff of World Cup qualification in their nostrils, and they want to make it. They are playing their hearts out today here against the Philippines in front of this charged-up crowd that's made up of both Saudi Arabia fans and Philippines fans. It's a great atmosphere in Jeddah here in the King Abdullah Sports City, and Philippines have really had a fight on their hands this first 20 minutes. And Saudi Arabia just playing with so much energy, 
sense of purpose. I mean, they just look like a different team under Coach Royakers. And uh, again, I think uh, it's just kind of a, a breath of fresh air to bring someone of his uh, acumen and approach, his positivity. It just seems like it's really making an impact on this Saudi Arabia team. Philippines right now, I mean, they have got some talented, skillful players out there, none more so than Bobby Ray Parks. Uh, but they just haven't been able to pull away yet. It could happen in the second half. That was a terrific swat from Mahna al Marwani. And what I like about Royakers is he's gone to his bench early. He got Cotty in there. He got some good play from him. I think Cotty has some limitations on offense, but what he does bring you when he comes off the bench is strength, physicality, energy, and we saw it on that first play. There he is trying to defend in that low post. Uh, the Kwame is just so exciting to watch. Look at him here. Not going to stop that. And then you've got Ramos. A little bit of finger flick right at the end. And this was him handing it off to Soto, who has had quite a few highlights in this first half, whether it's dunks, swats. He's been uh, putting himself in the limelight. Abdel Gabar with uh, one of the two three pointers. Al Marwani also, excuse me, uh, Abdel Gabar has both three pointers, two of five from deep. So at halftime, his Philippines leading at 31 to 25 over Saudi Arabia. Who will you become when the moment arrives and you're carrying the expectations of an entire nation, representing your people and their dreams, the colorful faces in the streets, the screaming fans in the stands, Time to make your move. All eyes on you. All hope. All heart. Because when you win, you win for all. That's a great secondary two. Here's the deep three. Oh! From way downtown in the car park at Khalifa Sports City, Mustafa Rajin. A frustrating sequence for India. They pulled to within five. And now look at this. They give it away. Mahna Al Marwani beats his own chest in Saudi Arabia, back in business, up 13 points. Now they got to run their play. Wu takes a three. Oh wow, are you kidding me? What do I know about it? How about that? What can Jordan do at the moment? They haven't been able to change anything. Their flow is exactly the same, and that's what's put them in this hole. Perez, oh, Soto, audacious from the young man. Often Quano comes in and brings the emotion, brings the energy. Easy two-handed slam. Blanchfield sliding down the lane. Jamshidi Jaffrabadi inbounds it, gets it back. He's got the four fouls. Gets it to Hadadi. What a play! The defense went with Mo Jamshidi and left Hadadi wide open. It's a three point game. Chan again. Oh, what a bounce pass to Ezzedine. They're going to call the foul as well. Well, that was splendid. Just seeing uh, Kok Chan just knows how to play, doesn't he? Gajan Port gets picked. Here comes Xiao Rei. Misses the layup, and Wong comes in and dunks home the putback. Wong Jaelin.
23 seconds, and Tucker steps up and hits the three. Oh, and it's wide open, the easy slam for Aguilar. Slaps the glass. Ties the game at 10 apiece. Under the free throw line, little soft mid rangers runners. Oh, the follow of Alduary puts it with the thunder. Well, what a game we have here in Jalen Kai Zachary Soto with six points. The first two coming here. Looked like Gilas had turned it over, which they had, but then uh, Saudi Arabia turned it right back over. Uh, Kai Soto is always uh, an important part of what this uh, Gilas team wants to do. Look at that, because of what he can do on both ends of the floor. And for Saudi Arabia, no surprise here that it's Khalid Abdel Gabar that's uh, leading the way. I mean, he had a great game as well. He's had some great games for his country over the years, but had one the other day against India. And uh, he's got eight points today, three of nine, uh, including two of five. I mean, had that gone in, I just would have fallen out of my seat. I mean, that was a, a bold attempt. And his coach actually took him out after that. But uh, he did hit those two three-pointers. You know, get, getting the points is the real challenge, I think, for the Saudi Arabia team. And if they can keep that scoreboard ticking over, they'll have a chance. Uh, but uh, worrying signs the way that first half finished with Philippines opening up a six point lead. Well, the math is uh, is pretty simple as far as uh, Saudi Arabia and getting to the World Cup is concerned. They come in with uh, having won one game less, but uh, their run in to the end of the qualifiers a little more favorable uh, than Jordan. Jordan today uh, having come off uh, a loss against Philippines today, they're taking on New Zealand. And uh, if somehow, some way, Saudi Arabia could get a win against the Philippines, uh, they would pull level in wins and losses with uh, Jordan. And actually, they would leapfrog them in uh, to that next qualifying spot. And you have to remember as well that Saudi Arabia will take on India again, and they will be big favorites against India, who 
for all the, the natural raw talent and potential that they have are really struggling uh, as, as a national team program to, to make it to that next level. I'm sure there are reasons for that that uh, Vessel and Maddich would be only too happy to tell everybody the India coach. Uh, but the reality is uh, that even against Saudi Arabia, India were just completely overmatched late. So I think Saudi Arabia probably already putting a, a, a check mark next to that game against India, thinking they're going to win that one. And uh, what they what they need is a win against this team uh, today or a win against New Zealand uh, in their next one in the next window. And if that happens, look out. You might have Saudi Arabia on the plane to either uh, Okinawa, Jakarta, or Manila for the World Cup. So 32-team World Cup. And uh, Philippines, as a host nation, they have qualified from Asia. Japan, they take up one of the seven spots from Asia as well because they're hosting games in Okinawa. Indonesia, one of the hosts, but they will not be there because they did not get to the quarterfinals of the FIBA Asia Cup. Stroke of genius, it was that appointment. I mean, you, you listen to Royakers, and he is spot on. It's like, hey, listen, if we play defense, we're going to have our chances at the end of the game. And again, do not talk to the referees. You know, number one, uh, because you don't want to be distracted. You might have to get back and play defense. And uh, it's still, I would think, a long shot to beat this Philippines team, but who knows? Who knows? World Cup qualifiers app. Get it in your smartphone. Scan in the barcode. And you will have everything you need in these incredible qualifiers at your fingertips. Remember the first qualifiers back in November 2017? All of us had a lot less gray hair. But now we're all much wiser and full with incredible memories from all of the qualifiers from Asia, Europe, Africa, the Americas. And in many respects, the qualifiers are just as good as the World Cup. There's just so many things that happen. And it's just such an incredible experience to see uh, so many fans pile into the arenas uh, to watch their national teams. And uh, clearly, the hunger was there for that to happen. And it's just been a, a wonderful, wonderful wrinkle that's been added to international basketball, this consistent national team basketball. And but long may it continue. So they have action underway. Philippines with a 31-25 lead here over Saudi Arabia in Jeddah. And Philippines attacking the basket to the right. They got the basketball and coming right out and stretching their lead to eight points. Japheth Aguilar, uh, the veteran, the one player that was in that World Cup team back in 2014. He's the connection. Well, that was a great team. Mohammed passes it back outside. Abdel Gabar. Al Marwani. Aguilar saves it in bounds. Uh oh, he goes. And look at that. They had a chance. Well, here comes Dwight Ramos. And a technical foul has been called on the youngster. Now your heart going down for a flop. And I think that's a good call from uh, uh, the Australian referee. That was not enough contact to send him over. And the young man needs to take the medicine and learn from it. Dwight Ramos misses the technical free throw. Azim Bader al Yohar, there's no doubt about it in terms of his talent, his potential. Played the FIBA Asia under 18, FIBA qualifiers back in 2020. And uh, well, what a shot that was, a three-pointer, and the lead now double digits, the three from Pagoy 
36-25, batting down the hatches. Oh, almost a travel, Amarwani. That was a dangerous pass. Now Yohar, it's on line. Oh, and Mohammed fast so tough. That is a great non-reaction from Kai Soto. He just gets on with it. Look at this. Look at this. Look at that. I mean, that, that is just way too much for Mohamed. And Kai Soto didn't react. Great, great sign for him. Here's a three-point shot. And Pavoy misses Scotty Thompson there. Back to Ramos for three. And it rattles out, but nobody boxes out on the rebound. Oh, they missed. They get a break, Saudi Arabia. That was an easy two from Philippines. Abdel Gabar gets in. Oh boy, what a play from Aguilar coming over there to get the block, affect the shot. And the rim protection has been great for the Philippines. It's been fantastic. Here it is again. Man, Aguilar wants to, wants to finish up with uh, the most blocks in the game. He didn't get credited for a block there, but he definitely affected the shot. And you go back to those words from Roy Gers right before the start of the second half, and he said, defense is what's going to help us get to where we want to go. we got to play defense. So this is where they have to put in the effort. There's Soto, catches it in the low post. He scores. And a chance for a three-point play. Soto really playing well now. He's got six rebounds, three blocks to go with his eight points. He's got a chance for a three-point play. This is probably the most important timeout of the game for Saudi Arabia. remaining positive and upbeat, but there's no doubt about it. I mean, it's, uh, you know, this this Saudi Arabia team is now up against it, trailing 13 points uh, against a Filipino team that I think probably has much more offensive firepower. And the only way that Saudi Arabia are going to get this done is if they, if they play D, they crash the boards, they get out on the fast break, uh, but they also do not turn the basketball over. Uh, but they're, Shot clock winding down to five. Abdel Gabar gets it to Mo Almarwani. He puts it up, and that's much better. And Chant Reyes wanted to travel, and uh, I have to say, I think I might agree with him. Look at this again. See if he travels. Oh, I think, I think so. Yes, but anyway, it's tough to it's tough to get them all right. So 38-27, Philippines. Oh, well, that was also a travel. But, so it evens out. Oh, nice drifting in, scoring Pavoy. Now 
Mario Hart desperate to get it going offensively. Remember, he had the four three pointers against India. to drop that three-pointer and really that's the man they need shooting him and it, just with one shot he cuts it back to a 10-point game Scotty Thompson quickly oh boy that, he was blazing quick and he scored with his right hand with a twisting layup oh how your heart passed it up that time I built the bar here he is again, same spot. Different result, but the offensive rebound and put back is there. There's Shibali, his first two points. And Japheth Aguilar gets around, gets the easy one. And that's gonna lead to a substitution. And I'm not sure who is at fault there. Uh, we're going to find out when uh, the substitution takes place. Because you can't trade baskets. Belong. And Muhammad with the moving screen. So who is Warriors going to yank out of the game? That was... Uh, a foul. So it's going to be out of your heart. It's going to come out. I would think. It is indeed. And it brings Cotty in. So out of your heart needs to learn from that. Here is the pass to the corner. Three pointer. Good. Philippines have the wind in their sails right now. They have got it going, especially on the offensive end, up 15 points. Caddy for three. Oh, great steal. Oh, the rejection from Soto. Soto doing everything, but now it leads to a layup for Abdel Gabar. And the, and the craziness, the, the frenetic chaos ends up benefiting Saudi Arabia. But then coming right back is Pogoy, who drills a three pointer. And the Philippine fans, they don't care. They're just loving it. Their team hits the 50 mark. Pagoy with 13 points, his third three-pointer of the game. And speaking as a neutral, it's fun to watch. Here goes Abdel Gabar for three. Good. He gets it right back. Trying to get it to Soto. They're going to get it to Pagoy again, and they're going to call a technical foul. Flopping. What comes around goes around. They have called the technical foul on Scotty Thompson. And the Iraqi referee, I think, is spot on with that call. That is the correct one. I mean, you see it happen all the time. Players going down, trying, you know, putting the pressure on the referee to make that call. So, Fahad Bilal goes to the line. He has yet to score. And takes his time and makes it to cut it back to a 12-point deficit. And he did it right in front of the referee as well. He's saying he got his leg clipped, but I think his teammate's having a good chuckle. He sure has it. But Al Yohar has uh, paid the price and sat down. Here's Ashur. Mid range. Beautiful shot from Ashur. And now Saudi Arabia closed the gap even further. Back to 10. Perez getting another chance. 
Here he goes again. Ooh. And palming the basketball. Number 17, Perez. And a sure, that was an assured shot. Tell you Soto in there, you, you really have to think twice about challenging him at the rim. Shabali puts it up in the lane. Oh, great activity on the board. Shabali. And I guess the Philippines after the shot. Watch this again. So he blocked it. Now they're gonna they're gonna change the call. Yeah, I think that's the right thing. I was I'm not going to say that was a bad call, but that was definitely one that I didn't agree with. Bobby Ray Parks. Somebody else you got to worry about out of the perimeter. Coming back into the game, Scotty Thompson's going to inbound it to Perez. You got three players out there that can handle the basketball pretty well there with Perez. Here he goes, gets in, and draws the foul. You got Perez, you got Thompson and Parks. Philippines go up by 12 points. Two and a half minutes remaining in the third. Al Yohar. He's going to put it up after the pump fake. Sure. Ramos guarding him. And Soto's doing everything. He reaches in, comes up with the steal. Then his pass to Ramos, who's able to get it before it goes out of bounds. Now the third down low, just a little too high for Kai Soto. Uh, for Scotty Thompson. Soto and just really good really bolstered that interior uh, for this window to the Philippines with Kwame having both Kwame Soto and Japheth Aguilar Perez oh. living dangerously Saudi Arabia Perez in pretty good position there Oh, I'm the horn. I almost traveled. Here he is in the corner. Puts it on the deck. Out to Abdel Gabar. And the double team comes, so he gets it to Muhammad. Good, quick hands from Perez. Almost coming up with the steal. Contributing offensively now. And once again, back to a 10 point deficit for Saudi Arabia. Philippines have not been able to lower the boom. Perez gets in, takes an incredible shot, a reverse layup, and draws the foul.
Mohammed goes out. Did a great job playing to his skill set. And Pettis makes it work. It's the first. Pettis with the rebound. Ramos down the lane, hands it off to Kwame, who I don't know if he wasn't ready for the pass. If he thought Ramos was going to go up with it. No, but he didn't collect it. Well, Shivali goes out. Good minutes from him. And Mathna Almawani back in the game. Here's the drift and Ramos. Tough drive, Dwight Ramos. Malal, Matna, Almawani puts it up. Oh, he gets it to go. I thought, I thought that the, the hand was going to put him off the shot. Perez, guarded by Abdel Gabar. Goes off one foot. And good work from Matha Almawani. He's got to launch it. He does. And that is the end of the quarter. Well, I mean, really, you can have no complaints from an effort standpoint from this Saudi Arabia team. They are given everything, but maybe it's just the quality in that Philippines a team that rosters too much. Philippines extend their lead. They lead it 55 45 at the end of three. So the Philippines with five more makes inside the inside the arc. And that's the difference. The Philippines have scored eight points off turnovers, six more than Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, however, scored, uh, well, they've also got six more points in the paint, Philippines. And it's, uh, you know, you pick in your top player and in a game like this, and, and maybe it's uh, Soto for what he's been able to do on both ends of the floor today. He has been, he has been a star, really. Kai Soto just left the game late in the third quarter. He's got eight points, six rebounds. He's got four blocks. Yeah, he's plus 17 efficiency, which is the highest in the game. Now, Saudi Arabia overall, from an efficiency standpoint, being led by Abdel Gabar, he's got tw plus 12 efficiency. He's got 13 points, three assists. Now, Yohar is a player that can help them. And Mathna El Mawadi has only played 14 and a half minutes. He usually plays more. So interesting uh, to know what Warriors thinking goes. He's in the game now. Scan the barcode for Portside 1891 for video streams, schedules, and scores, folks. Get in your smartphone. Look at that Saudi Arabian fan section. Terrific atmosphere here in Jeddah. The King Abdullah Sports City. It is alive and kicking. Abdul Gabar for three. Well, he's not ready to throw it in. He cuts in that deficit again. That was Abdul Gabar. Seven points the difference. 16 points for him. He's three of six from deep. Perez. Bobby Ray Parks thought about launching it. Shot clock winding down to the Philippines. No. Perez for three. Oh, that's a backbreaker for Saudi Arabia. What a terrific take from Perez.
And that might just be the biggest shot of the game. If that doesn't go in and Saudi Arabia get the rebound and go the other way and score. Uh, but instead, Perez takes the lead right back to 10 points with no time to spare. He's got six points. This is first basket from the floor. Before that had been three or four from the free throw line. Mathna Al Marwani driving in. A little bit out of control. And oh, jump ball called Aguilar tied up by Mo Al Marwani. That probably is not the best shot in the world for Mathna Almarwan. I mean, you're going up against the biggest, most aggressive two players on the court for the Philippines. Oh, what a drive from Perez. He's had enough. He wants to he wants to really make his mark in this game, and he has scored his team's last five points. Abdel Gabar gets it to Almarwani. Great effort from Mo Almawani. Now Abdel Gabor has it. The effort is there from Saudi Arabia. I can't stress it enough. Kadi open for three. It's just the, the quality sometimes a little bit lacking. There it is again. Hooping and scooping. Has it knocked away by Kadi. I think he's going all the way. He is, and he doesn't make it. And another missed layup attempt for Saudi Arabia, and that one really hurts. I think right now you need Caddy out there for his for his uh, defense. Perez again, and Abdul Kabar rebounds and runs. He looks up the floor. He gets it up the floor to Mata Al Marwani. Is blocked from behind by Kawami. What a sensational hustle play from Ange Kawami. Utterly terrific hustle from number 34. And Bobby Ray Parks gets hit where the sun doesn't shine. Look at this. What a play. Just great hustle. I mean, ideally in that situation, you want to dunk it if you can uh, to prevent the block. And then Bobby Ray Parks experiences the physicality side of basketball, which he'd rather not. So time out on the court. Here goes Parks again. Yeah, he got the knee. That's what it was from Mo Almawani. Well, that's just definitely the hustle play of the game getting back on defense to get the block from Kwame. Look at this again. You just do not give up on plays. And Aguilar also hustling. And that's a great sign for Chop Rays uh, to see his players getting back and giving the effort. Now they want to see, was this Goal interference, perhaps. A good block to me, although Aguilar does get the rim. He hangs on the rim, so I'm not sure what they're going to call here.
So Bobby Ray Parks will go to the line. They had a look at it, and nothing on tours from the Philippines. Uh, but now Bobby Ray Parks again goes to the line and, and misses with his first attempt. Good play of time for Saudi Arabia, but they got to get stops and points. And uh, honestly, of all the Saudi Arabia games that I've seen them play, I've seen them play quite a few. The, the effort in this game has been terrific from them. Great drive from Cotty. That's back to an 11 point game. Perez. Pavoy. Bank wasn't open. And the ball batted out to Abdel Gabar. Mafna Al Marwani for three. Count it. Don't give up on Saudi Arabia yet, folks. They've closed the gap to eight. Terrific, terrific effort from uh, from Saudi Arabia. They're just focusing on the game. There's no bickering. There's no complaints. There's no lack of hustle. And this is a great shot from Mathna Al Marwadi to cut that deficit to eight points. He now has six. Or excuse me. He has uh, 13 points. And Perez drives in. And foul has been called. Yeah, the charge just went right into Bilal there. Second foul on Perez. Huge possession for Saudi Arabia as they try to get even closer. Into the corner goes Caddy for three. Saudi Arabia trailed by 10 entering this quarter. Here's Bobby Ray Parks. And multiple Saudi Arabia players crashing the boards. But the ball hauled down by the Philippines. And Scotty Thompson fouled will go to the line. Foul that was on Mo Almawai. And Thompson makes both free throws to take it back to a ten point game. Doga Bar, boy, he thought about making that pass into the lane. Caddy for letting him have it. Mathna Al Mawani. Over to Mo and front and back of the rim. And then the tip, not there. Now quickly over to Scotty Thompson. Quickly down low to Aguilar and he gets it back outside. And there's the alley oop to Kai Soto. Just wonderful basketball by Gilas. In and out and back in to Kai Soto, who's got 10 points. And just a terrific pass, alley oop. I mean, you throw it anywhere near the rim when he's in there, and he is going to throw it down. Can't fall asleep. And I think Mo Almawani did just fall asleep a little bit.
Well, that was uh, the last two points scored. And again, you can hear Roiker is saying, hey, guys, you've got permission. Shoot it. Don't be hesitant. You know, and uh, I think he saw the hesitancy from Caddy to launch it when he had the, the open three. So the lead goes back to 12. Five and a half minutes remaining. Bilal, guarded by Perez. Caddy, he's open, and he makes it. And that's what you get. The coach fills him with that confidence. Right during the timeout, he comes right out and strokes it. And Caddy's really played well offensively the last two games, but they're not stopping the Philippines. Great drive, Perez. Abdel Grabar. Into the corner. Caddy again. And that attempt rattled out. Ball turned over. Good job, Caddy, reaching in, knocking it away. Mathna Amarwani to Caddy, a little runner. And I think there he probably settled for a runner rather than going hard to the basket. Parks. And then fouled by Caddy from behind. It's hard to stay with if you're Bilal and getting crossed up. And then Perez as well. And just no rim protection there from Al Malwani. That's the, the big difference with these two teams is that you just do not have the same rim protection from Saudi Arabia that the Philippines have had. And Caddy has played terrific today. I mean, it's, you know, no matter what happens well, today, well, the next window for this Saudi Arabia team, you know, these guys are getting important experience and be, you know, good for them heading into the next window of the FIBA Asia Cup qualifiers. Boy, that was a dangerous pass. Abdel Gabar over to Mathna Al Marwani. And they are refusing to die, Saudi Arabia, and they're looking disciplined, more disciplined and organized than I've ever seen. Aguilar drives in, misses, quick outlet. Abdel Gabar, it's go time. Saudi Arabia don't have time to wait around. Great effort, though, the block from Scotty Thompson. Japheth Aguilar gets it down low, passes it back out to Bobby Ray Parks. This was the Al Mawandi three-pointer from the corner. And timeout, 3-12 remaining. Let's go down to the bench. Okay. 
Well, when you think about Asian qualifiers, this is the standard that you want in terms of atmosphere, in terms of everything. Pogori takes a seat with 13 points. Uh, this has been a terrific basketball game. Just the, the energy, and it's just so encouraging uh, to see both of these teams come out and play today the way they have. It's been a good test for the Philippines. Saudi Arabia team has, uh, has not gone quietly, as they had so often uh, over the years. Oh, a nice over-the-shoulder pass goes out of bounds with one second on the shot clock. Oh, he doesn't know. He didn't know that he had to launch it. Jaffa Aguilar. And I guess you just need to Make sure you keep an eye on that shot clock. You got to know those things. That being said, the coaches, they got to tell them too. 11 points of difference, 252 remaining, and Saudi Arabia are going to have to play their best basketball here the rest of the way to have a chance. And that's on both ends. Pointer, Shabali. Now you are back in the game, number 46. All right, it's bounce pass, but it's uh, not taken. And Mafna Almarwani into the corner, Assure for three. Uh, good tip out to Assure. They're going to get another look. They're going to put it out your heart. No, it's going to be in the corner. Out your heart. They want the three attempts. Mafna Almawadi. Good. Well, patience paid off. And just like that, Saudi Arabia cut it back to an eight point game. Don't go away, folks. Crazy things could happen here in Jeddah. Bobby Ray Parks for three. Oh boy. And that was a steal, a turnover that Al Yohar simply could not allow to make. Uh, but you might want to chalk that one up to inexperience. Look at this. Not to be fair, I mean, it wasn't as if he fell asleep. It was uh, just a good play defensively for the Philippines. And then Al Yohar called for the foul on Scotty Thompson. So Scotty Thompson. Officially was given an offensive rebound, but I think he should more. Like, I think he should actually be given a steal because Al Yohar had the basketball. Now you are. I think he's. Uh, this has been a, a considerably harder task taking on the Philippines uh, than it was going up against India, which I'm guessing you probably already knew that was going to be the case, but. Your heart today has scored five points, just two of ten from the floor. A dose of uh, international basketball reality for the young man. Uh, but nevertheless, an exciting talent. And he'll have to get better, as will all these Saudi Arabia players. They've fallen back behind by ten points with a minute and a half remaining. Just really struggling to make inroads. And here's how you are for three. It looks good. And it was long. Stays at this end. And he can't get down on himself out of You see him looking over at the bench. He's frustrated. It hasn't been as, as easy as it was when he was 4-5 against India. Oh, boy. And now the over and back violation. So, yeah, some of the inexperience, I think, evident, uh, but he'll learn from it. So, the law coming in from Mathna Al Marwani.
And Kai Soto fouled as he goes up by Shibali. Well, you know, you consider how this thing went in the last window in August, at the end of August, when these two teams played. And you draw your own conclusions about whether or not this is a better Saudi Arabia team. They're pretty much the same players. Al Yahar is now in the team. But it is a markedly different performance to what we saw before when they played in Manila in the Mall of Asia Arena and the Philippines won 84 to 46. This is a completely different Saudi Arabia team because of the way they're getting about their business. So I think Roy Cruz has really gotten through to this team. And here's the bounce pass. And great play. Oh boy, he needed to make that. for Saudi Arabia. New Zealand not doing them any favors today. Jordan on top of New Zealand, 81 to 67. So Jordan, with four minutes remaining, closing in, it appears, on a very important win as they try to get to the World Cup. Philippines up by nine points. Ramos on the baseline. Great play by Philippines and taking it back up to an 11 point lead. He has 11. Well, it's going to be a bitter pill to swallow for Saudi Arabia today because they realize the ramifications of not winning today but also that they were very good today. You know, they, they played well. Now the war needs to, if he needs to learn anything from this, from this game, he's got to keep his spirits up. He can't lose his confidence. You know, you can't pout, you can't this isn't a pickup game at the park. You're playing for your national team. You got to be battling away on every possession. And when you make a mistake, you put it behind you and you keep playing hard. That's what sports is all about. Dwight Ramos goes to the line, makes the first. And Chop Rays. I mean, the pressure, believe me, out of all the teams in Asia. I, I would think there's more pressure on, on Chop Rays than any other coach, and that's even with the Philippines assured of a spot in the World Cup. Because he knows that everybody back home is watching, and they, they want to see a good performance. Abdel Gabar. And I think it would be difficult to really pick too many holes in this performance. That's my opinion. I think the improve the the closer score line is because Saudi Arabia are, are a more formidable opponent coming into this game than they were the last time they met. So the final seconds ticking off the clock. Ramos is going to put up a three. And Abdel Gabar, one last chance. It's going to be Bilal. al -Yohar puts it up. al -Yohar missing. And again, disappointment for him, disappointment for Saudi Arabia, but they need to take the positives out of this. They were a much different team today, folks. But the Philippines, the power of the Philippines, you feel it, the power of their basketball, of their support, the love that their fans have for their country. You feel it. You feel it today. And they rewarded that love with a 76-63 victory, a 13-point win in the King Abdullah Sports City here in Jeddah. Well, Kai Soto, the player of the game, I think without question. 
I mean, that's just, if you just go on efficiency, plus 23 at 11 points, nine rebounds, five block shots. He was an animal out there. He was terrific. Pagoy was really good, 13 points. Perez played well in the second half. Scotty Thompson overall was solid, nine rebounds to go with his nine points. Also had a couple of steals. And Philippines uh, thanking their fans that showed up today here in Saudi Arabia to, to, to lend their voices, to give them that support. Philippines win it 76-63 over Saudi Arabia. Well, there it is. Again, you feel the power of the Philippines, their basketball. Filipinas, Gilas. It's an incredible honor uh, for anybody to put on that jersey, and these players know it, and they got to give the effort they did. And Chow Reyes will be happy, I think, with how today went. Look at that. I mean, this is a tremendous, tremendous Filipino showing from a fan standpoint at an away game. And those Philippines fans are gonna stick around a little bit longer to say thank you for coming, making the occasion more memorable. I mean, they got it done. Seven more makes inside the arc. They're rebounding, eight more boards, one more assist. They did turn it over four more times. Uh, but I just think overall their approach, their quality was a little bit better. Amawani had the game high. 19 points, Abdel Gabar 16. But as you look at the highlights of this game, and I, you know, I've been singing their praises all game long, folks. This Saudi Arabia team, and you could send this and send it straight to the coach's office. They were a better unit today. And this is something that they can build on. And if, uh, as long as he keeps getting through it, it looks like he is, you better look out for Saudi Arabia. Because they are uh, a much tougher prospect to take on. Philippines scored 11 points off turnovers today. Uh, both teams had 10 fast break points. Just five points turno off turnovers scored by Saudi Arabia. Uh, 22 points in the paint. Scored. by Saudi 32 for uh, Philippines and 24 points off the bench for the Philippines so it was a great uh, a great game game great great game and I think uh, you know, one of the things that when you think about with, uh, particularly with Saudi Arabia, uh, they will be hoping, I think, uh, to get back uh, the rim protection uh, with Mohammed al su -Wailin. You know, that's the player who went down with injury, couldn't play at the FIBA Asia Cup, so that really hurt them. Uh, if he could come back uh, and give them that additional rim protection, that would be a huge, huge lift. And when you look back at how he played in the Asian qualifiers for the FIBA Asia Cup, you know, he did have his share of blocks. He had 23 block shots. He was averaging 2.9 blocks per game. So when you put him back in the lineup, now will he come back the same player uh, after the injury? I, I, I suppose so. The science is so good today. He should be fine. And, uh, uh, but for Kai Soto and, and the Philippines, Kai Soto, Aguilar, and Kwame, the, the rim protection was there for them today. And I think that was really a huge part of this game. Uh, with Saudi Arabia just not getting that much going to the basket. They did have the nine three-pointers. 
And I thought also that Mafna Almawani, it seemed like he kind of dropped in the, the pecking order a little bit, but he took it well. In the end, he played 20, 24 and a half minutes and scored the 19 points, eight rebounds. So he had a good game. So uh, Jordan taking on New Zealand right now, winning, and Lebanon uh, will be playing tonight, taking on India, also in Group B. Uh, but the story today was a much improved effort for Saudi Arabia, but also uh, terrific performance from the Philippines. The Philippines win it 76-63 here in Jeddah at the King Abdullah Sports Center. And leaving, uh, a lot of fans will be leaving to go home happy. And you can see the Philippines and Japan have hosts that they've already placed their spots. You've got uh, Lebanon, New Zealand, Australia, also from Asia. They put their places, so still, you know, spots available. Cote d'Ivoire plays from Africa, Canada from the FIBA Americas, and Finland, Germany, and Latvia have clinched places from Europe, where there'll be 12 teams going from Europe. So that is where we are right now. So a lot of fun, folks. Philippines win it 76-63 over Saudi Arabia. It was uh, entertainment from start to finish. Saudi Arabia, the new look Saudi Arabia. They mean business. They came out and they showed what you can do when you really put your minds to it. But Philippines, just too good, too much quality, too much energy today. The Philippines win it.